Hello everyone. Welcome to my step-by-step -step summary video on how to herd manage. I've tried my best to make this video as easy and simple to understand as possible and I hope this helps you. Before I begin with showing you the steps, I want to go over what is herd management. Herd management is essentially the reorganization of your herd population to increase your chances of finding or obtaining rares, diamonds, super rares, and great ones. Herd management is a form of min-maxing in the hunter call of the wild, and it is a playstyle that is not for everyone. Everyone has their own reasons, preferences, and playstyles that help them enjoy the game. I am someone who plays normally and with herd management, and I personally enjoy both of them. In case you're new to the game and you have no idea what are rares, super rares, diamonds, or great ones, I will quickly go over that here. If you do not want to be spoiled, then do not look further. In the case of what is rare, it is typically albino or melanistic skinned animals. However, I highly recommend you check out the Hunter Call of the Wild wiki as it houses all the information you can possibly need on each individual animal. It showcases their drink times, skin rarities, and more. Diamonds are the highest trophy rating or score an animal can get typically. Great ones do exceed the trophy score, however these are special animals and as of making this video only 6 animals have great ones. And lastly, super rares are essentially diamond animals with rare skins. Before we get into the steps, there's one last thing that I want to mention. Using tents, hunting structures, and a good weapon helps make herd management be a lot easier and less time consuming. As you progress in your herd management, you will accumulate a lot of money, so you do not need to worry about not having these yet, as you will be able to invest in them later. One thing you should have before starting herd management that is non-negotiable is a skill in the ambusher section called spotting knowledge as it shows you the trophy rating and weight of the animal which is crucial in herd management as I will explain later. So let's begin. Step 1. Do your research and pick which animal you want to herd manage. You can use the Hunter Call of the Wild wiki to get all of the information that you need, such as difficulty level, weight, trophy score, if the animal is a group animal or solo, and what genders can be diamonds. Knowing all of these is important for later, so please ensure that you know them. Hotspot maps are incredibly useful, but cannot be found on the wiki. Here is an example of a hotspot map that I made. It showcases the animal's territory or range on where it can be found on the map. It also includes a lot of other information such as all the potential drink zones which is outlined in yellow. So where do you find them? You can search online for hotspot maps or if you watch any Call of the Wild content creators you might be able to find their hotspot maps on their Discord or social media. Once you've got all you need, now comes step two. Find all of your drink zones. If the animal that you're trying to herd manage doesn't drink, the second best option is to find their feeding zones. This is because you'll be setting up your tents at these zones, making the grind a lot easier and faster. It is important to find all of your zones because if you don't, animals that are harvested have the possibility to move to the zones that you have not discovered yet. Zones make it easier to find your solo animals which are important as they can complicate the grind massively. Lastly, you can choose resting zones but I found that feeding zones are consistently more out in the open, making the shooting grind easier. As you look for your drink zones or feeding zones, you should also take the time to unlock all of your outposts on the map. 
This is important for those who do not have tents as outposts will be your fast travel points until you get tents. In order to find your outposts, you need to go to your lookout points which look like this on the map. Once you've surveyed the area, your map would have revealed the surrounding area and any nearby outposts. Then you should go to your outpost to fully unlock it to be able to fast travel to it at any time. Now comes step 3, setting up. Once you've found all of your zones and outposts, pick which zones you want as your 8 or more main zones and which you want as your low level zones. Main zones are where you would want to find your desired animal. Your low level zones, as the name suggests, are the zones in which you will have your low level animals and will eventually be ignored. So what is considered a low level animal? The highest maximum difficulty in the Hunter Call of the Wild is level 10. However, only great ones can be level 10. Therefore, the highest level an animal can be is level 9. However, the maximum difficulty for each animal is different. If the animal's maximum difficulty is 3, levels 1s and 2s are considered low levels. If the animal's maximum difficulty is 5, levels 1s, 2s, and 3s are considered low levels. And if the animal's maximum difficulty is 9, levels 1, 2, 3, and 4 are considered low levels. Your low levels should not be the animal's max weight, and only keep the lesser weight animals in your low level zones, as low level animals with max weights are no longer considered low levels. So you might be asking, why are we separating levels, and how does this work? The reason for this is every map has a set number of each specific animal on the map and will always, more or less, stay close to that specific total number for that specific animal. If a specific animal's population is mostly low level, the game will try to spawn higher level animals to balance it out. The lower the average score and weight of the current population, the higher average score and weight of any respawns or repopulations. And finally, once you've decided which zones are your main zones and low-level zones, if you have tents, begin setting them up. You should set your tents 200 to 250 meters away from the zone. Otherwise, let's get into step 4. Begin the shooting grind. Go to all of your zones and begin to shoot the animals that do not belong in their respective zones. Leave any low levels in your selected low level zones and leave any high level animals, including your diamonds, in your main zones. If you have any diamonds or max level animals spawning within your main zones, you want to leave them to encourage the spawns of low level animals in your low level zones. This is what we call stacking. What I'm about to say is very important, so please keep this noted. For some animals, the females will always be level 1. Those are the females that you do not shoot and that you leave completely alone. For the animals that can have females be any other level but can never become diamonds, you should keep them as low levels only. For those of you who do not have tents yet, you still have to go to all of your zones. But once you've gotten enough money to buy one tent, it is recommended to put it in a zone that is far from any of your outposts. This is so you do not have to walk to that zone anymore, and you can continue to do this with your tents one by one. No matter what, always pick up your harvests and note that the ATV has a 300 meter spook radius. Now here is some important information. 
If you are herd managing a group, only shoot two animals per group. Ensure to leave two animals in the group. Otherwise, if you leave one animal, it will actually become a solo animal and no other animals will respawn in that zone as a grouped animal. If you are herd managing a group of three or two animals, treat it like it's a solo animal. Either leave it alone if they are low levels or just shoot the ones that are not low levels. However, if they're in a zone that you like, just shoot all of them to delete the zone and find the new one. Keep in mind, if you shoot a solo animal, it will always delete the zone. So you'll always have to go and find the new zone. If you are herd managing a solo animal, leave it if it's a low level or delete the zone by shooting it and find its new zone. One thing to note is that females will always spawn as females and males will always spawn as males. So now you've made it. As this video comes to a close, here are some tips to help you. As you know, once you've already shot at your zones, the animals would have spooked. I highly recommend going back to the main menu to reset that. I personally reset this after every rotation. If all of your animals have fully respawned and you find yourself wanting to switch a female with a male, you need to kill an equal amount of females with an equal amount of males in order to cause that swap. By your next respawn, you may be able to see that they have swapped places. Once you get to a point where you can start shooting your high level animals, you will notice that sometimes low level animals will spawn in their place. This is totally normal. And because they are in your main zones, just shoot them anyway, and you'll be able to get your high level animals back. So when is the point where you can start shooting your high levels? It is when all of your animals and their levels are in their respective zones. Then you can start shooting your diamonds or high levels. Oh, and one last tip. If you have a really good weapon that more or less one shots the animal, it will speed up this grind immensely. So let's do a quick recap. Step one is to do your research on what specific animal you want to herd manage. You need to know its maximum difficulty level, trophy ratings, weight, is it a group animal or a solo animal, and which genders can be diamond. Step two. Find all of your selected need zones and unlock all of your outposts. Step 3. Pick your 8 or more main zones, the rest are your low level zones, and if you have tents, set them up. And lastly, step 4. Shoot all of your zones until your animals and their respective levels are in the right zones. So basically, High level animals should be in your main zones, low level animals should be in your low level zones. Solo animals should be treated accordingly based on that specific animal. And so that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video as this took way too long to finish. However, I wanted to make it as informative and easy to understand as possible. I tried to go over everything that is important. Of course, I am human, so I will make mistakes. I hope this helps at least one person because I spent days on this. Anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing day and thanks again for watching this video.